makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, <laughs> tomorrow is the birthday of a great American, George Washington. This is the man who was the first president of the United States. In those days, Mamma Mia, was no Democrats, no Republicans. So Washington was a pretty smart fella getting elected all by himself. <laughs> anyway, to celebrate the birthday of this great American, Mamma Mia, the radio is going to be full with the stories about him tomorrow. And my night school classes are going to help out. You see, on the local radio is going to be a big contest between all of the schools here in Chicago. And our teacher, Miss Spalding, is a picked Olson to recite the Washington is a farewell address. <laughs> Mamma mia, if you can imagine a tall, skinny Washington with a Swedish accent, <laughs> that's going to be Olson. <laughs> but to tell the truth to Mamma mia, I was hoping Miss Bordener would have picked me to say the farewell address. But I guess she figured... Why trust the Luigi with the Washington's address if he's got enough of trouble remembering his own address? <laughs> well, it's a time now I should have got to my night school classes, so I'm going to finish this a little late. That's all right, so don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. All right, class. Quiet, please. Please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwood? Here. Mr. Olson? Yeah. Mr. Schultz? Aye, aye sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please, you are in a classroom, not a boat. Miss Spalding, the way I studied my lesson today, either way, I'm going to be zonk. <laughs> well, pay attention, then, and learn something. Now, class, since tomorrow is Washington's birthday... Uh, Miss Spalding, if I may interrupt, uh, what about that contest tomorrow? I have memorized that whole speech. Oh, well, Mr. Olson, I have a special announcement to make about the contest. But right now, let's get on with the lesson. Mr. Basco. Yes, teacher. You may tell us when was Washington born. On a Washington is a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Luigi, does he take chances? <laughs> Mr. Basco, give us the exact date of Washington's birth. Oh, that there was in a February. Yes, go on. February 22nd. What year? 1732. Well, now that we finally got Washington born, let's get on with the revolution. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, instead of being funny, tell us something about the part that Washington played in the revolution. Why, certainly. To begin with, Washington was on the American side. Of course. Go on. Well, uh, he was a general. Yes. He won every battle he fought. No, Mr. Schultz, Washington lost some battles, too. Yeah, I know, but on his birthday, is it a nice thing to say? <laughs> Miss Bording, Miss Bording, you said it before you got some announcement to make about the George Washington contest for the radio. Oh, yes, I have. Uh, class, there have been some program changes made, and... Oh. Well, Mr. Olson, I'm afraid you won't like this news. What news, Miss Fordy? Well, the principal has changed our plans, and you won't be able to make your speech tomorrow. What, well, Miss Spaulding, I, I spent hours memorizing Washington's farewell address. No, what? So did Washington. <laughs> <laughs> the smile, Olson. She up. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but uh, Miss Spaulding, if Olson had done to make the speech, how are schoolers going to win the contest? Well, the principal decided that our class should present a joint effort. 
He thought we'd stand a better chance of winning if we all participated and presented a short play based on Washington's lie. Hey, we're all going to be on the radio. Yeah. Who is it going to be excited? Yeah. And instead of a listening, I'm going to sit home by my radio and hear myself a talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Luigi, with you and me and Horowitz and Olsen on the radio, television will jump ahead 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Olsen, go ahead, laugh. Mr. Olsen, I wish you wouldn't feel so badly about it. Well, I, I just can't help it, Miss Foley. This news just gave me a, a gigantic yolk. <laughs> Olsen, Olsen, why you don't write the play and put yourself in it? Luigi, I don't write. I recite. You know, Mr. Basco, you did such a fine job writing our Columbus Day play last October. Do you think you could write us a little Washington play? Like? Well, Miss Foley, I'm going to be very happy to write it. And everybody is going to have a party. Luigi, cut me out of the playlet. Well, that makes Olsen a cutlet, huh? <laughs> smile, everybody. Oh, do try to cheer up, Mr. Olsen. I'm sure you'll have a good part in the play. Oh, sure, Olsen. I'm going to write the bigger parts for everybody. Good boy, Luigi. And I think, I think I know how I'm going to finish. Yeah. Washington. First in a war. First in a peace. First in the hearts of his countrymen. You like it that day? Yeah, but with three firsts in one day, we should give this play at Santa Anita. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey. Hey, what are you writing there, little pumpkin head? That's uh, for George Washington. Luigi, he ain't gonna read it. He's dead. <laughs> it's uh, for the radio, Pasquale. I'm gonna write a play about the Washington so my classic can act it on the radio. And maybe our school is gonna win a first prize. What is the first prize? A box of Martha Washington candy? <laughs> Pasquale, I think it's not the right that you should make a fun of maybe the biggest American who ever lived. Oh, me? Luigi, I love George Washington. Maybe you don't know this, but all day long, I go around and kiss in my own private collection of George Washington pictures. Huh? Hey, Pasquale, where do you keep these pictures of Washington? On the dollar bills and my cash register. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell me, Luigi. Hey, you writing a part for me or Rosie in your play? No. No, huh? No. Only my class is in it. And I'm a plain of Washington. You? <laughs> well, well, well. Look who's going to be George Washington. My little banana nose. <laughs> oh, Luigi, you certainly learning to be a big ham, writing the play, taking the main part. I suppose you also going to be the cherry tree. <laughs> Hey, Pasquale, maybe you're right. You think, you think it's not nice if I write the play and also make myself a Washington? Sure not. Ever hear this a fellow Shakespeare acted in his own plays? Of course not. He should give Lawrence Olivia the chance. <laughs> Look, Luigi, I brought you here to America. I'm responsible for you. Please, let me explain to you something about good manners. When you come to my house... And we both eat it, and there's a one little piece of food left on the plate. Who you suppose gets that piece, you or me? Maybe we share it up. Is it too small to share up? It's only a crumb. Now, who gets it? Pasquale, if you're hungrier than me, I'm glad to let you have it. No, no, no. <laughs> look, look. We both are just as hungry. It's only enough for one of us. Now, what do you do? Well, uh... I'm going to run out to check this grocery and I'll buy some more food. It's a Sunday. The store is closed. <laughs> yeah, but Pasquale, you're starving from hunger. I'm going to run a half a mile to get you some food. And you mean to say, if you check he wouldn't open up his grocery for you? He wouldn't, huh? Oh, I hate that man. Get him on the phone. I'm gonna... <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's going on? What are we talking about? Look, Luigi, what I'm trying to teach you... A gentleman always serves himself for last. If you write in the play, you know cannot be Washington. I suppose you write to Pasquale. Olsen, he would have been very mad. He's mad enough already. But Miss Spalding has said that I must write to the play. And Pasquale, 
I would like to play the Washington. Well, that's too bad, Luigi. Hey, look, Luigi, if somebody else was to write this play for you, then he could make you Washington. It wouldn't look like you was a grab it off for the best part of yourself. <laughs> but but it's a wonderful idea. But but who could write this play for me? <laughs> me? <laughs> uh, you? <laughs> sure. Luigi, you've got nothing to worry about. I'm going to write this Washington play for you. You're going to be Washington. Nobody's going to get angry at you. Your school wins the contest and you're a big man. Oh, but, Pasquale, what will Miss Spalding say? Don't worry, little cabbage birds. <laughs> when she reads it, when I'm a written for you, you're going to be a bigger man than a Washington. Yeah, but, Pasquale, if you're going to write this a play, you got to know some facts about the Washington. Oh, stop. Luigi, I don't bother with those little things. When I get in my head on a subject, it's to get right down to the meat. <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. You really meet the head. <laughs> That's a funny thing. And when I'm say it, it's a come out of difference. <laughs> Mamma Mia, it's the come of the big day. Tonight, our classes are going to act out the George Washington play on the radio contest. And right now, Pasquale is busy writing it. I'm a little afraid of how it's going to come out because, because this morning I saw two books he took out of the library. One the book is The Life of a George Washington. And the other book is The How to Write the English. <laughs> but Mamma Mia... I'm a hope I'm not doing nothing wrong. But maybe he's not going to come out so bad. And, and he's give me a chance to play George Washington without making all sin mad to me. Ah, here comes Schultz in my story. I'm going to ask him what he thinks. Luigi, my fellow boober. Hello, right, Schultz. Well, what will the Washington play? Is it good? Am I the hero? Where is it? I want to read it. Well, right, Schultz, uh, Pasquale, he's writing it. Yeah, but the important thing is... <laughs> <laughs> did, 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 did you say Pasquale? Yeah. Pasquale, that's the Italian Maxi Rosenblum. <laughs> hey, Schultz, sure, so maybe it's not going to be so bad. Pasquale, he's reading a book on a Washington. That's no help. It would be better if Washington was reading a book on Pasquale. <laughs> that's Miss Spalding, no. I know, I know. I'm afraid to show it to her. <sighs> Luigi. We got to do something before the contest. Luigi. Ah, oh, hello, Schultz. Hello, Einstein. <laughs> oh, you heard the good news, huh, Mr. Delicatessen Man? Pasquale, spell cat. Sure. K A P. That's all. Luigi, your witness. <laughs> so, Luigi, please, let's escape out of the country before the damage is done. <laughs> Look, Schultz, I'm doing a Luigi a big favor. The way I'm wrote this play, at least he's a Washington, it's not going to hurt Olsen's feelings. No, what? Better to hurt Olsen's feelings than we should do the play and break off relations with the original 13 colonies. <laughs> Miss Gladys. Did you write it a good? Luigi, stop worrying. I wrote a very good play. From the minute I got to Washington throwing that dollar bill across to the Mississippi, till the finish where he's going to discover Washington, D.C., that radio audience is going to eat up every word. I can just see tomorrow's headlines. Tomaine poisoning hits Chicago. <laughs> Hello, class. Oh, hello, hello, hello Miss Bolt. When do we go on the air, Miss Bolt? Very soon, Mr. Howitz. Gowdy School is just about finishing their play now, and we're on next. Uh -huh. You all better take your places around the microphone, and don't forget when the red light flashes, you're on the air. Mamma mia, we're going to be coming out of the radio. Yes. Ah, my heart is beating like a frightened little cocker spaniel. <laughs> 
I feel a little yesterday too by Yingley. Oh. Now, class, try not to be nervous. I'm sorry I couldn't attend any of your rehearsal, but Mr. Basco, knowing how you feel about Washington, I'm convinced that you've written a wonderful play. Well, uh... Well, I'm hoping you like it, Miss Polly. Oh, don't worry. It's a beautiful play. I, I mean, Luigi took care of everything. I have the utmost confidence in him, and I hope you'll all do well. Our school board head, Mr. Anderson, is here tonight, and he expects us to win for our school. Mr. Schultz, what are you scribbling there? Schultz's farewell address. I'm committing suicide. <laughs> Come now, you all look too nervous. You must play your parts with confidence. Miss Spalding, I've been looking for oh, you. Oh, Mr. Anderson, a uh, class, I want you to meet our school board head, Mr. Anderson. Oh, hello, Mr. Anderson. Hello. Hello. Good hello. evening, gentlemen. Hello. I hope you're all ready to do your best. True, so we're broadcasting from only a small local station, but your voices will be heard by many thousands of people. Poor innocent bystanders. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Anderson, if we are broadcasting over the radio... How do we know who wins the contest? Yes. Well, we've set a time limit. After the broadcast and after each school's presentation, the audience phones in their votes. The school receiving the most phone calls wins the contest. Phone calls? Hmm. That's a fair in a square. <laughs> I haven't read your play yet, gentlemen, but I'm sure it's a fight. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Basco has a great feeling and love for Washington. Now, class, before Mr. Anderson leaves, are there any questions you want to ask him? Yeah. Uh, which way is Siberia? Miss <laughs> Baldy, <laughs> will you accompany me to the control room? From there, we can watch the broadcast together. Why, certainly, Mr. Anderson. Well, good luck, class, and do try hard to win. Oh, quiet, everybody. The light is turned red. And so, friends, if you like this play best of all, please call at once. The number is Central 0578. And now, our last class, Miss Spaulding's night school group from the North Halstead Street School will present several scenes from the life of Washington. My name is George Washington. <laughs> My papa is a giver me this name because he's the one that I should have been named after a famous man. <laughs> He was a taking at first to name me Benjamin Franklin. But that was no good, because if somebody has yelled out a Benny, we would have both to turn around. <laughs> Mama was like the name of John Hancock. But that was taken by some insurance company. <laughs> so, my name is George Washington. I was born on February 22nd, and I remember this day very clearly because the papa wanted to take a mama to the hospital in a taxi, but he couldn't. <laughs> he said, I had no money, and the banks was closed because it was a legal holiday. <laughs> well, after I was born, Six years was a flyby, and I was a six years old. <laughs> One day, I was a playing in the yard when I hear my mama. She's a calling me. George, George Washington. <laughs> yes, mama. George, I am baking a sherry pie, and I ran out of sherries. Here are two Gildensterns. Go to the grocery store and get me some sherries. <laughs> but, Mama, it's a Sunday and a few check is a grocery store is closed. George, I, I must have those sherries for my pie. We're having some British generals for dinner. And I wanted something nice to feed those redskins. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mama, I'm going to see why we got to feed those British. They are giving us a taxation without the representation. They refuse to give us our freedom and they're raising the tariff to increase the king's revenue from us subjects. You'd stop talking like a child. <laughs> now, now, go off and get me some cherries. All right, Mama. Where am I going to get the cherries? I could have run down to the saloon and steal the cherries from the Manhattan glasses. (laughs) 
But the wait. What am I talk about? How am can I chop down a pop as a cherry tree? Little did I realize what I was doing until later that night the papa was calling me. Georgie! <laughs> yes, papa. Georgie, come over here. <laughs> yes, papa. Georgie, I want to ask you a question. A sherry tree was shot down at four minutes after two today. Ten minutes later, you came into the house with five pounds of sherries. There was a little axe which I found by the tree. I sprayed the handle with powder and I found your fingerprints on it. <laughs> later, later I went along to the scene of the crime with my magnifying glass and your footprints lead directly from the tree to your bedroom. Now, I made a chemical analysis of the mud near the tree and it matches exactly the mud I found on your shoes. Now, Georgie, I don't want to seem suspicious, but who shot down that tree? <laughs> Papa, I'm not gonna tell a lie. I'm a director. That's what I like. A boy who tells the truth. <laughs> the years was a passerby and a me too. <laughs> Now I'm a general in a valley forge. All of my soldiers, they call me hungry. Then suddenly my aide is a walk in, my first thing in the command. And I'm a say to him, What's the new first aide? <laughs> my general, I'm very sorry to report we've had no contact with our nearest headquarters. What are you talking about? For the last five hours, you got a three men figuring out that there are smoker signals. I'm sorry, my general. It turned out it was just a bunch of hobos roasting frankfurters. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I think I'm going to hear somebody coming. I must be the scout. <laughs> general Washington, I bring you a message from the men in the front to the men in the rear. What's the message? Change places. <laughs> I'm going to like that message. <laughs> and uh, by the way, Scout, why it uh, took you so long to get here? I stopped to help an old lady cross the river. Great <laughs> General Washington, I got important news for you. What the news? Well, it's good news and bad news. Uh -huh. Good and bad, huh? Yeah, General Washington, the soldiers are cold. They are freezing. They got no shoes, no overcoats. They haven't eaten a meal in six days. They ran out of ammunition, so they are deserting by the thousands, and it looks like we could lose the war. Uh-huh. Is it that all? No, I also got some bad news. What's that? <laughs> I couldn't get you that liverwurst sandwich for Skeddy's grocery store was closed. <laughs> What a shoot, sir. What do you think? Do you think we can win a contest? Eh? I ain't talking till I see my lawyer. I just heard that the Marshall School got 50 phone calls. You think they'll beat that? Adam School got 67 calls. Yeah, but a shoot, sir. What do you think are we going to get? 20 years to life. <laughs> Stop buying everybody. Smile. Mr. Anderson, I can explain Miss everything. Balding, that was a disgrace. Which one of you men wrote that? That idiotic mess of nonsense. We're not talking, huh? Miss Spaulding, this is your class, and I'm holding you personally responsible. Oh, well, Mr. Anderson, where's your sense of humor? Oh, sense of humor, is it, Miss Spaulding? I'm going right now to the program director of this station, and in ten minutes you will go on the air and publicly apologize for the whole disgraceful exhibition. Mr. Basco, I had so much confidence in you. How could you let me down? No, Miss Spaulding, I'll take the responsibility. No, no, it, it, it's me. No, I blame myself, Miss Spaulding. I should have written that play like you told me. No, Mr. Olson, oh. we can't blame you. Yeah. Well, find it out among yourselves. I'm innocent. <laughs> psst, psst. Hey, Luigi, come in. Huh? In this room. Luigi, you wouldn't like to see Mrs. Spaulding take the blame for that play, eh? 
You want me to tell the truth to who wrote it? Pasquale, are you going to tell Mr. Aniston that you was who wrote it? I might to Luigi if you was to say yes to a certain party. <laughs> it's a nice sacrifice to make a few teach you, Luigi. All right, to Pasquale, I give up. Good, I love a weekly. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to call the happy little bride. <laughs> Rosa! 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 little bunny face. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. Hello, <laughs> Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa. Luigi has just made the biggest sacrifice a man could make. He's going to give up his freedom. Oh, Luigi, you're going to go to jail? Oh, shut up, you face. <laughs> Luigi, Luigi. Oh, we, we, we did it. We won. We won. We won. Sure. We got 117 votes and they are still coming. Yes. Uh, we won. Mr. Basco, it's amazing. The switchboard is full of calls for our class. Oh, oh, oh uh, yes, Mr. Anderson. Oh, I can't understand it. Phone calls have been pouring in for your class. It seems you've won the contest. Yes, so it seems. Now do I have to go on the air with that public apology? Oh, stop that, Miss Balding. I was only joking. <laughs> Where's your sense of humor? Kevin, Miss Balding, wait, wait. Uh, Pasquale, he deserves the credit. He wrote to the play, not to me. Oh, now I understand. <laughs> Well, by some miracle, it turned out all right. But it certainly is a surprise to me how we could have won. Come on, Luigi. Come on, and we go home. I got another big surprise waiting for you. Rosa? No, it's even bigger than that. Come on. <laughs> well, let's go into my spaghetti palace now. Hello, station WPXR. Hello, Station WPXR. I cast my vote for Miss Balding's class. Hello, WPXR. I vote for Miss Balding's class. I cast my vote for Miss Balding's class. Hey, hey, Pasquale. Look, at they're changing their voices with the handkerchiefs. <laughs> sure. Happens there's also five other fellas are calling up from Joe's pool room, cigar store, all over the <laughs> You told them to do all of this? Luigi, I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my own little nickels. <laughs> oh, you did, huh? Yes, and now tell me, my son, when are you and Rosa getting married? I cannot tell a lie, Papa. Never. <laughs> Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. They present this program each week because they know that millions of Americans like to listen to the adventures of Luigi just as millions enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. You see, chewing Wrigley's Spearmint is not only good, wholesome fun, it's also good for you. That's because sinking your teeth into a smooth piece of gum is a natural way to help relieve pent-up tension. It gives you a pleasant feeling of satisfaction. Keep refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum with you at all times so that you can chew and enjoy a stick whenever you please. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama, Basco, in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. The Wrigley Company invites you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.